we go. All right. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Welcome to today's CNCF live webinar. Managing IoT devices from Kubernetes with Ocri. I'm Libby Schultz and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I'm going to read our code of conduct and then I will hand it over to Kate Goldenring, software engineer at Microsoft. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you're not able to speak, but you can enter all of your questions into our lovely chat box. Go ahead and say hi to us, tell us where you're watching from and leave your questions here. We will get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the code of conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct and please be respectful of your fellow participants and our presenter. Please also note that the slides and recording will be posted later today to the online programs page at community.cncf.io under online programs and will also be available via your registration link and the recording will also be on our online programs YouTube playlist. With that, I will hand it over to Kate to kick things off. Awesome, thank you, Libby. Well, hello everyone. Um, so today we're gonna be talking about Aukri, specifically how Aukri can be used to both discover and manage IoT devices from Kubernetes. Um, and just to kick it off, um, who am I? Uh, my name's Kate. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft, and I'm the maintainer and core developer of Aukri, which is a CNCF sandbox project. And beyond that, um, I'm generally very active in the open source community, focusing on contributing to Rust and Kubernetes projects. One that you may know of is Crestlet, which is another CNCF sandbox project, which enables running WebAssembly modules on Kubernetes itself. Um, so feel free to follow me on either of my socials, but um, today we're really focusing in on Aukri. So let's talk about what we're gonna talk about. Um, I wanna back up and talk about the motivation behind Aukri and where it came from. And then we'll talk a little bit about what Aukri is, go through some scenarios, um, IoT edge scenarios that can be simplified with Aukri. Then we'll look a little bit at Aukri's architecture and all of this is going to lead up to a demo of using Aukri to discover IP cameras and then use them in a streaming application context, and then go one step further of managing these devices by performing a firmware upgrade on them. And then we'll end with talking about what's next for Aukri. And then throughout this presentation, feel free to put any questions you have in the chat. We'll have plenty of time at the end um, and we'll address all those questions that we can. And then at the end of all the slides here, we have a link to Aukri's documentation. So that'll also link out to our GitHub and other resources such as our Slack. So feel free to navigate to there, maybe bookmark it, explore during presentations. So looking at the motivation, um, oftentimes Kubernetes is run in the cloud where you have racks of servers that not only themselves are very homogeneous in their compute and resources, but also their environment, it's very static. Um, however, on the edge, not only are these nodes themselves very heterogeneous, so they support different amounts of compute, but also is their environment. So you have all these tiny IoT devicer, devices, think MCU class, sensors, controllers, et cetera. And not only are there a bunch of different ones, but also they're constantly scaling up and scaling down. And oftentimes these devices are too small to run Kubernetes themselves. Um, so they may be MCU class devices that kind of have one fixed function, or maybe they don't wanna be modified to run Kubernetes. So think brownfield devices. So Aukri came from the question of how can we dynamically leverage these devices in a Kubernetes cluster when these devices themselves can't run Kubernetes. And so the goal of Aukri is to create an open source standard way to connect these devices to a Kubernetes cluster and manage these devices from a cluster. Which is really why Aukri stands for Kubernetes Resource Interface. It aims to be that interface that abstracts the way the details of discovering and using IoT devices on the edge. And it does that by first discovering the devices. So um, we look across the network locally on the device or attached to the device. Um, across the network locally on the node or attached to the node for these devices. And then for every device that Aukri discovers, it connects it to the cluster by creating a Kubernetes resource to represent the device. 
Um, and then we have a controller that can automatically deploy workloads to discover devices. And what's unique about Aukri is that because it is really focused on the edge, Aukri actually means edge in Greek, um, we handle those uh, occurrences that are more common on the edge, such as devices dynamically disappearing, maybe there's a loss of connectivity to the device, or devices all of a sudden coming online. And Aukri will see that, it'll remove the Kubernetes resource we've created to represent that device, it'll bring down the workload that we've automatically deployed to use that device, and then if new devices come online, we'll automatically see that deploy appropriate workloads. Also, because we're focused on the edge, um, we were built in Rust to optimize to being as low footprint as possible. Um, and we really work on, and we run all of our tests on some of the common lightweight Kubernetes distributions, such as K3S and MicroKates. And a final note, I um, mentioned this earlier, but we are a community-based project. Um, we're open sourced and a CNCF sandbox project. And this becomes really important when we talk about um, the way Aukri does discovery, because the more people working on Aukri, the more types of devices Aukri can discover. So, like I mentioned, there are a lot of tiny IoT devices out there on the edge. Um, so, what IoT devices can Aukri discover? One thing to note is that IoT devices do not need to be modified to work with Aukri. Our goal is to not run anything on the devices themselves. They're oftentimes too small to even put anything on them. Um, rather, we want to communicate via the protocols that they already speak. So we call this pattern of communication that we make with these devices our discovery handlers, and they're oftentimes just protocol implementations. And currently, Aukri has support for three discovery handlers. Specifically, we have support for UDEV for discovering devices on the local Linux device file system. So these can be any USB device, such as USB cameras, USB microphones, or they can be embedded devices such as GPUs. We also have support for discovering industrial machinery via OPC UA. And finally, we have support for discovering IP cameras um, via the ONVIF protocol. And that's the one that we're kind of highlighting in our demo scenarios today. However, the thing to note is that our discovery interface is fully extensible. It's simply a gRPC interface. Um, so if you wanted to add support for discovering a new set of devices via a new protocol, all you would need to do is implement that interface. Um, and that discovery handler, which is the implementation of that interface, can run in its own pod. So you can simply install Aukri via our Helm chart and just add um, with our template, your discovery handler, and already you've enabled Aukri to, to discover a new set of devices. So we have community members working on discovery handlers for um, ZeroConf, which discovers MDNS-based devices, and co-op for constrained devices. And I linked at the bottom these slides, which we'll share out after this, um, the direct uh, link to the documentation that describes how to go about making a discovery handler. So originally when Aukri was created, we were really focusing on device use. Specifically, we had this one scenario in mind where Aukri would discover devices and deploy a long running pod that acted as an information broker. So you can imagine, um, say we had some of um, say we had an IP camera, you're constantly, this is an example we'll show later, pulling streams of frames from that camera. Or say you wanted to constantly be monitoring the temperature of the thermometer. Um, those were kind of the scenarios we were originally looking at. Another one would be a protocol translation gateway. So maybe you discover a USB camera and a broker that's this long running pod advertises as an IP camera. And so out of this came the term broker being for the workloads that Aukri's controller automatically deploys on your behalf to discover devices. However, um, as Aukri evolved, there became a desire to have single task Kubernetes jobs deployed to discover devices. And so in our latest released Aukri version 0.8.4, we added support for deploying Kubernetes jobs to discover devices. So this opens up the world for more management scenarios for Aukri. And so those are kind of the two buckets to kind of focus in when thinking about using Aukri. You can use Aukri to, of course, discover devices. And then beyond that, you can use Aukri to either use devices, kind of process information from devices, or to manage devices via its new support for Kubernetes jobs. And so we're going to highlight both of those scenarios in the end with our demo. So let's look at some common, let's look at a IoT um, scenario on the edge 
and talk about how you could do it today without Aukri. And then we'll look at how you can use these IoT devices um, in a more abstracted way with Aukri. So in this scenario, let's say you're a farmer and um, you have an issue on your farm. You have some coyotes that are coming in and eating your chickens. And you've decided you wanna solve this problem and you have some um, you have some IT background, so you decide to set up an IoT scenario where you're essentially going to install some IP cameras on your farm, do some inferencing to identify the coyotes, and ultimately alert you that you need to go out and scare away the coyotes and save your chickens. So you decide to do this from the cloud, and you take a microservice approach, um, deploying one frame server pod to each camera. And what this frame server pod will do is it'll connect to the RTSP URL of a specific camera and grab the footage from that camera and basically serve it over some interface. So you deploy one of those for each camera. And then you deploy an inferencing pod that uses a GPU to do some coyote identification. And then finally, you have an alerting pod that will ultimately tell you to go out and scare away the coyotes. So this is all doable. And however, you're on a farm. It's um, on the edge. And maybe you have some latency issues or maybe you want to follow the law, laws of data gravity and process data closer to where it originates. So you decide you are going to install a server directly on your farm. And you're optimistic about scaling out your farm. Maybe you think you're going to add some fields or add some chicken coops where you might need another server. So you go ahead and add it to a Kubernetes cluster to easily scale out your deployment. Um, we can walk through the same. Um, setup that we had in the cloud. And let's look to the right of the screen and see kind of the steps involved with this so that we can see how they change with Aukri. So now one thing to note is the only information that's going to the cloud is that final alerting information. The rest is being lo uh, processed locally on the edge. So we do the same thing. We um, deploy a frame server to each camera, manually configuring exactly what camera it should be grabbing frames from. Then we deploy an inferencing pod, and that inferencing pod needs to know how to find that GPU and connect to it. It needs to know how to pull the information from each of the frame server pods. And then it'll pass information off to the alerting pod. This is all doable again. It only took four steps. That's not horrible. But what happens as the environment changes? What happens if a camera goes down? So now that frame server may be erroring. Um, and maybe you need to send someone out into the field to fix that camera to get that frame server back running, or maybe you need to manually bring down that frame server. What happens is if you add one, two, three cameras to your environment, scale out your IoT deployment? Well, you need to go and manually um, deploy each frame server and configure it to talk to the appropriate camera. Say you do, in fact, um, get another chicken coop, install another node. Um, well, uh, you need to now deploy another inferencing pod to gain the advantages of another GPU and attach that to your alerting pod. So one thing to note here is as the environment continues to change, you'll need to continue to interact with the cluster and make management interactions. However, um, we'll see that with Aukri, all you need to do is three initial configuration steps, and then the environment can continue to change. You can continue to scale up and scale down your IoT deployment and um, Aukri will adjust on your behalf. So let's look at that. Same setup we had previously, but you'll note that our first step here was installing Aukri. And you can do that via Helm, which is basically the package manager for Kubernetes. So now that we have Helm, uh, sorry, now that we have Aukri installed on our cluster, which is that green box, um, we can go ahead and tell Aukri what to find and what to deploy to what it finds. And you do that via Aukri's custom resource definition called a configuration. So in the configuration, um, there's two main sections to look at. Um, the first is the discovery handler. And that's what we were talking about earlier. It's the protocol, discovery protocol, that you want Aukri to use to find your devices. So in this case, we're specifying OnVIF to find these IP cameras. Um, not depicted here, you can also add some filters. Um, then you want to specify what broker or what workloads you want deployed automatically to discovered cameras. So here we're going to specify for the IP cameras, we want to deploy um, a frame server to each camera. So after applying that to your cluster, Aukri will discover the cameras and automatically deploy a frame server to each camera. 
what you'll also see is, and then it provisions each of those frame servers to connect to a specific camera. It does all that for you. What you'll also see is this larger blue box that represents a service layer. So Opry can also automate the creation of services. It can create services for each device or each broker, and it can also create a service that contains the output of all the brokers or devices of a configuration. So you'll see here, it's the latter one. We have one service that can be pointed to to get all the frames from all the cameras. And that's ultimately the service that the inferencing pod can point to um, and know exactly how to get all those frames. Speaking of the inferencing pod, we can now go ahead and configure Opry to discover a GPU using Opry's UDEV discovery handler and then deploy an inferencing pod. So this is just another configuration. Um, after applying that to the cluster, Opry will find the GPU, um, deploy an inferencing pod, and now we have our entire setup. So um, what happens as the environment changes? Say you add cameras, Opry will discover them and immediately deploy frame servers. Say you add a node, Opry will de detect the new GPU and immediately deploy another inferencing pod. So you can see the environment can continue to change, but we're only gonna have those original three steps. So this really illustrates altogether how Opry can simplify device use on the edge. Let's look at that, that second bucket that we talked about, which was device management. So same scenario we had previously, but now our objective is to not only use the devices, but also manage them. So in this case, we want to perform a firmware upgrade of these cameras. You can see we've added here at the bottom the firmware version. Let's say they're all at version 1, and our goal is to get them to firmware version 2. So we can do this once again with another Opry configuration. In this case, once again, we're using Onviv because we're discovering the IP cameras. And our workload now is going to be a job um, with a specified image that is a firmware upgrade. So once you apply that to your cluster, you'll see we now have an upgrade job deployed to each camera, and the result will be that the cameras went to version two. And this is actually really similar to the demo that we're gonna show at the end of this talk. It's going to show a use scenario, and then we're gonna perform a firmware upgrade on these cameras. So let's zoom in to what that green box was um, in our scenarios being Aukri, and look at its architecture a little. So Aukri has an agent that runs on every single node in the cluster and a controller that runs on the control plane. The agent does the work of discovering the nodes, uh, sorry, discovering the IoT devices and creating Kubernetes resources to represent them. And the controller does the work of deploying your specified brokers to the discovered devices. So the flow of this, as we saw, the first step is to install Aukri's first custom resource definition, its configuration. And as you mentioned earlier, in that configuration, you specify what you want to find via the discovery handler. And you specify what you want to deploy to what you find via the broker. And then you can also here specify some services that you want automatically deployed. Once the configuration is applied, the agent will look across the network, locally on the node, attached to the node, et cetera. It will tell the discovery handler to look for those devices. For each device that's discovered, it'll create a Kubernetes resource to represent that device using the device plugin framework. And it will also create a second custom resource definition, the instance, to represent that device. Um, and the instance not only represents the device, but it also represents what nodes can see the device. It also has a list of um, what workloads are currently using the device. And it even has connectivity information in it. So for example, for an IP camera, it would have the IP address, MAC address, RTSP URL, all the information that a broker would need in order to know what device to connect to. Then the Aukri controller will see an instance that's been created for a device, and it will deploy um, the broker you specified in your configuration um, to one of the nodes that can see that device. Um, and that broker will connect to the device, take whatever actions it was intended to do. Um, one thing to note is that this broker and this diagram, we put the word custom broker because that's really what you bring to Aukri. Um, we've created this platform for discovering and automating the deployment. And then it is your workload that we will deploy on your behalf. And so in our demos, there are samples that we've created, but this could really be anything that you intend to do with a device. 
And all of this is kicked off via um, an installation with Helm, which, as I mentioned earlier, is the package manager for Kubernetes. And we can break down this installation a little and see that by default, the Aukery controller and agent are um, installed. And then you can additionally set what discovery handlers you want deployed to each node. Um, and then you can build that configuration, which is really just YAML via this Helm installation. So you can give it a name, you can specify what workload. So in this case, we're specifying an upgrade broker. And you can even set this um, setting called capacity. And capacity is how you specify how many use a device at once. So this is really important with shared devices. So say you have an IP camera that four nodes can see, but you only want three workloads using this device at once. You could set this capacity to three, and that would mean that only three nodes could use this device at once, even though all four can use it. So it's a way that you can manage um, how much, um, it's a way you can manage not overloading a device and making sure that um, it's not being um, requested too much. So with that being said, let's kind of walk through the demo that we're going to show. It's going to look pretty similar to our earlier scenarios. But you'll see our demo is going to consist of two Intel Nook nodes. Um, they're both running Ubuntu 20.04. And they're going to be connected via a K3S cluster, which is a common Kubernetes distribution for edge scenarios. And you'll see that we'll have two IP cameras on the network. And these cameras are going to be mocked IP cameras. So they're full implementations of the OnVIF server and um, discovery service. However, um, we're mocking them so that they can support the, um, juice, the update system firmware handle that's a part of the OnVIF device management. And so when you call out to that upgrade system firmware, these cameras will call their upgrade service, which will then reboot them with an incremented firmware version. So we'll have these two IP cameras on the network. And our goal is to discover them. And then um, we want to use them via a streaming application. So we're going to deploy, like in our first um, scenario, frame servers to connect to the cameras, grab the frames, and serve them. And then we're going to ultimately have some application that's going to consume the frames from those cameras and display them. So let's walk through what that looks like. So we'll install Aukri with, the, with an OnVIF configuration um, and a specifying a frame server broker. And we'll see that um, a configuration is going to be visible in the cluster. And then the agent will discover the cameras and create two instances, one for each camera. And then the controller is going to deploy those frame server pods. And you'll note here that even though there's two cameras, there's four frame server pods that are going to be deployed. And that's because we're going to set capacity to two. So we're going to allow each node to use these cameras. And the reason we want to do that is, say one node were to go down, it creates a highly available scenario where the other node is still processing the cameras, still grabbing frames from them. And so our application will constantly be getting um, the streams. You'll also notice that we're going to use the ability to automatically create services. And we're going to have a service not only to point to each individual camera's output, but also to point to the output of all the cameras. And our streaming application will point to both of those services. And we'll see how we'll have a feed showing all of the frames from all cameras and a feed showing one feed from each camera as well. So we'll have. Um, created a scenario where we have this application that's benefiting from the work Aukri's done. And then we'll take the scenario one step further and show how we can use Aukri to manage these devices and perform a firmware upgrade. So we're going to install another configuration. Um, this one's going to be uh, an upgrade configuration that specifies an upgrade broker. And then the controller will ultimately deploy those jobs that will do an upgrade of these cameras, and they'll go to version 2.0. Great, so now we can jump into the demo. And I'm gonna just voice over it here and we'll go ahead and play it. So the first thing to notice in this demo is that we have these two test cameras on our network. Um, you can see that both of them have firmware version 1.0. And these are the cameras that were 
trying to discover and use with our streaming application. And then ultimately we wanna upgrade their firmware, increment it up to version two with a, an upgrade job. Um, and so the first thing we're gonna do is look at what our cluster setup is. So we'll just simply query with um, kubectl git node, um, which we're gonna do in a second here. Great. And you'll see here that we have a two node cluster, as we saw in our diagram, running K3S version 1.21. And now we're ready to install Aukri uh, with its Helm chart. So we're going to deploy um, our OnVIF discovery handlers. We're going to create a configuration. Um, and in that configuration, we're specifying that we're going to first use, um, deploy our frame servers to each discovered um, device. And notice that we put capacity as two. So we'll have a broker deployed to each device on each node. So we should have a total of four. You'll see here that we have an agent deployed to each node and one controller and an OnVIF discovery handler deployed to each node. We had two instances pop up, one for each camera. And now um, we have four pods, those frame server pods that are pending and about to start. And you'll see once they started, now we also have services that were created. Um, one for each camera, those longer services, and then one larger service to point to the output of all the cameras. So all of that was immediately um, created via our one installation. So now let's go ahead and visualize this with our streaming application. Um, this is a sample application we created for demo purposes. The only thing we're changing here is we're specifying we wanna use the OnVIF services. And um, now we can watch and confirm that it's running, quickly popped up. And now we want to access this application locally. So we're just going to um, grab the port of it and do some port forwarding to see it locally on the computer. Great. So now we can finally see our camera streams. You'll see that this top box is pointing to both cameras. So it's pointing to the larger service created by Aukri. And the top bottom two frames are each pointing to the service for each individual camera. Um, so at this point, uh, we know that we've successfully used Aukri and we have an application benefiting from the work of Aukri. Now we want to perform an upgrade of these cameras. So to do that, we're going to install another configuration. And this time, uh, we're only installing the configuration. So you'll see we're disabling um, the default features of our Helm chart, the controller, the agent, some RBAC configurations, and specifying a broker job, since this is a short-lived upgrade job, and specifying the image for that we created for this demo. So we're ready to go ahead and install it. And once this installs, it's gonna be pretty quick. We're gonna immediately see two jobs created, one for each device, and then two pods created that are a part of that job. So if we look, we'll see, yep, we have two jobs that were immediately created. And now we have two pods at the bottom there that are pending. And once they run, now they're completed. So that means they successfully upgraded the cameras or are starting an upgrade. So as can be expected, when a camera's upgrading, it's gonna restart. So we'll see that our stream, we don't have any streams coming from the cameras for the time being. And for our, mar our um, firmware upgrade suite that we set up, it um, simulates an upgrade by doing a 30 second timeout during the reboot. Um, and it's gonna restart the cameras um, and increment their firmware version. So we'll see that these are gonna come back online. There they are. Um, and if we refresh, we'll see now the firmware's at version 2.0. Great, so this demo showed how you can use Aukri to both use these devices and an application context, and also how you can perform management actions. Specifically, we showed firmware up upgrade via our new support of deploying Kubernetes jobs. Great, um, so let's talk about what we showed that Aukri can support and what Aukri does not yet support when it comes to device management. So, um, what we added in our latest release was the ability to add a full Kubernetes job spec to Aukri's configuration. You used to only be able to add a full Kubernetes pod spec. Now it can be a job spec. 
So this means that anything you can do with Kubernetes jobs, you can use do with Aukri. Um, so you can specify how many completions a job needs to have, how many should run in parallel, how many times it's allowed to back off um, before completely terminating and failing. So all that comes out of the box with Kubernetes, you can do with Aukri. And that's really to say like Aukri is very 100% Kubernetes native. Um, we support and run on all Kubernetes and do what Kubernetes can do. Um, what we do not support is currently is more of a managed rollout and um, kind of configuring what how those jobs should be deployed themselves. Um, so for example, say you had nine cameras and you wanted to upgrade three at a time, we don't have a declarative way of doing that currently. What you could do though is what we didn't show is in Aukri's configuration, you can specify some filters in that discovery handler section. So you could use Aukri to discover all nine of your cameras and then you can add filters to say, okay, only upgrade these cameras with these IP addresses. And you could deploy that upgrade configuration and then modify it with the next three IP addresses and the next three. Um, but something more declarative to say like three at a time does not yet come with Aukri. Um, another thing that we do support is you can continue, like I was mentioning, to deploy multiple configurations to use different, to use same devices or different devices in different ways. What we would love to support and would have been useful in this demo is showing some of that management information in the Aukri instance. So you saw that we had to show the OnVIF device manager to look at the firmware version of these cameras. Well, it would be great if all of that information, such as the firmware version, was in the Aukri instance as well, um, itself, along with that connectivity information. So with that being said, um, that is the content of what I wanted to share with regards to device use and management with Aukri. Um, if you're interested in learning more, our documentation website there, docs.aukri.sh, um, will kind of lead you to all the important resources, namely our GitHub, our Slack. And um, on it, you can find some demos. So we have our um, signature demo is it helps you set up some mock USB cameras, discover and view them with that same streaming application we showed in our demo. If you want to reproduce this demo, including the mock IP camera setup and the firmware upgrade suite, um, I threw together a HackMD that, that models this demo. Um, so this is that's at the bottom of the slide. Feel free to check that out. Um, and we may move that to our documentation site and make it more of an official demo. And then finally, uh, we have a Slack on the Kubernetes Slack. Um, it's the Aukri channel. Um, and we do monthly Zooms, which was actually this morning. So um, next month, uh, feel free to hop on and discuss there. And then if you want more of an overview of Aukri, another um, introduction, we presented at KubeCon Europe last year, and that included a bit more detail on our discovery handler interface. So if you're interested in what does that gRPC interface look like and what was the motivation behind it, that talk would be a great reference for that. Um, so with that said, we have plenty of time for questions um, and I can go ahead and start looking through the chat now and please continue to add questions there. Okay. Um, Looks like we have a couple if you want to dig in. Awesome. Yeah, I hope people ended up being able to hear me. Um, check and see. Yeah. Um, so with one of the supports, uh, one of the questions we got from James Liu was, does Aukri support discovering IoT device, devices using Modbus? So currently we only support UDEV, OPC Way, and OnVIF, but Modbus is definitely something we've thought about supporting and there's been some discussion around it and it certainly we could support. So um, if that's something you're interested in, in um, contributing, please check out um, the link that I showed earlier or go to docs.aukri.sh and it'll get you there. Um, yeah. Related to the previous question. Um, so ZeroConf was another one. Um, so yeah, we have someone contributing ZeroConf. They um, kind of, they took a break from the implementation, but they got really far. Um, one of the issues we had with ZeroConf is, um, so ZeroConf is essentially MDNS, so device-to-device um, -device communication with a discovery service on top of it. 
And that discovery service, um, it uses the hobby daemon, which is kind of bulky. And so we had to pause on that implementation because at the time when it was being supported, our discovery handlers were embedded in the agent. So adding support for zero comp really bulked up the size of our agent. Um, and so we paused there. But now that our model is extens uh, we have our new extensibility model and our discovery handlers run in their own pods, it's a really good time to circle back to that implementation. Um, that PR um, should be revived. And if you're interested in reviving that, please um, go to our um, GitHub and check that out. Um, it would be good to get some more uh, momentum behind that implementation. It's definitely something that we got really far with. There's even like a proposal up on describing the motivation behind it and everything on our documentation. Um, thank you, um, Tobias, for providing the HackMD link um, that I put here. Um, another question, can we deploy the different application pods based on the camera property or capability? Um, but the, okay, great. Um, so say that you have different cameras. Um, so maybe you have a camera at your house, um, one's at the front door and one's at the back door, and you want a different broker deployed to the one at the front door as the one deployed at the back door. Um, if currently with our OnViv discovery handler, the information it gets from a device I believe is IP address, MAC address, and application and um, camera name. So if you were to name your cameras differently, so maybe you named all the cameras that um, needed one broker one thing, and all the cameras that needed another broker another thing, um, you could create two different configurations to deploy different brokers to each of them. Um, beyond that, um, other details like um, deploying brokers to ones that had, oh, we also have scopes. That's another thing with IP cameras. So um, you can query any scope on the camera and kind of filter it down what devices you're targeting that way. So you could add a scope um, to target them that way. And if there's anything that our discovery handler doesn't um, make specific enough that you would want to add like extra filtering, um, that's also a feature request that you could add on Aukri if there was something else that you wanted to to target more devices that were more specific. Um, is anyone working on building energy management applications with Alcree like BACnet um, or BACnet? I'm not familiar with BACnet. Um, maybe if someone in the chat wants to add more context there. Um, but uh, energy management applications. So my assumption based on what this question is, is maybe you have a broker that's monitoring the consumption or use of a device. Um, that would be a long running pod. Uh, maybe you're doing some ML there to kind of uh, warn you, hey, this device is using too much energy at the moment, um, or just to kind of gather data on energy management. I could see that being a scenario. I'm not even sure if that's what you were asking about since I'm not familiar with BAC Net, but um, would love to hear more about that. And maybe if you wanna start a conversation about that, James, you can add an issue on Aukri, um, and we can have more of a conversation and kind of look at it um, more in detail and people in the community can pitch in there too. Also our Slack would be a good place to throw that question. Um, okay, so another question, um, is Aukri similar to Digital Twin? We get that question a lot. You didn't read too much into Aukri. Um, so the idea behind Digital Twins is that um, you kind of create a representation of a device. So you have um, a device and it has all these different um, settings or maybe the digital twin states what firmware the device should have. Maybe it states, we're talking in iPre camera context, maybe it states um, what zoom it should have, all these things. And then the assumption is as you modify the digital twin, um, there'll be some kind of um, workload that's working near the device that will make sure that it manages the device to match that digital twin. Um, there are similarities there. Um, the main thing uh, with Aukri is that it adds in that discovery part and it is Kubernetes native. So Aukri is for, for Kubernetes, run on Kubernetes, and we didn't really get into this detail, but the underlying implementation of Aukri is it uses the device plugin interface so how the device plugin interface works is it really was intended for static devices. So like GPUs embedded in servers. 
Um, but we took it further and um, used it for network and shared devices. Um, and because of that, you have this like Kubernetes presentation of a device. Um, and that leads to a scenario where you could, um, with pods, you can request CPU and memory. And with Aukri, it enables scenarios where you can request an IP camera. Um, so it does have circling back. It has a similar feel as Digital Twin, um, but there's a lot more Kubernetes um, to it. Um, an implement, do you happen to have a whole implementation list that support the discovery interface? Um, that would be great to have because we know that we support the three that I've mentioned a few times, but um, I'm not sure how many people in the um, community have their own. So I think some people have worked on MQTT. I feel like there was another one that I hadn't heard of that someone was working on and it would be great. Kind of, you know, how there's um, supported uh, Kubernetes clients in different languages. It would be nice to have a list of like, this is what other community members are providing, um, but we don't have that um, currently. Um, does Aukri implement, uh, integrate with the CD solutions, um, like Rancher Fleet? If yes, can we claim that implementing different rollout strategies is just a matter of configuration in Fleet? Um, I haven't used Rancher Fleet. Um, I would imagine, um, K3S is a Rancher product. Um, we should be able to implement, uh, integrate with it. So Aukri can run on, um, ideally any Kubernetes. We run all of our end-to-end -end tests on microk Kubernetes, we tested on K0s, AKS, um, EKS. Um, I would assume it can run on Rancher's solutions. Um, with Rancher Fleet, if it's continuous deployment solutions, um, so basically you're saying have Rancher Fleet do the work of the deployment. Um, so basically the Aukri agent could do all the discovery um, and resource creation, and then maybe you would use Rancher Fleet to do your deployment scenarios. Um, that's That probably is very possible and very powerful. Um, so the controller and agent are completely independent. And so say Rancher Fleet had a way of watching for CRDs um, and taking actions based on that, that may be a really um, useful tool for my kind of honing into what management could look like with Aukri. So if you're interested in trying that out, I would love to see where that goes. Um, thank you for the clarification on BAC net building automation control net. If anyone else is curious about it, I would love to look into that a little bit more. Um, and so roadmap, um, another, so we had a comment, um, about Aukri being kind of like service discovery with Kubernetes. Um, yeah, I think that is a fair summary of what Aukri is. Um, using Aukri with Azure Digital Twin. Um, we've had an issue up on Aukri with that, um, and there is definitely some power there, um, but we have not taken uh, steps towards that currently. Um, yeah, I think we got through most of the questions there. Um, feel free, I'll... I'll I'll settle in for another few minutes. I mean, we have uh, till the end of the hour, but if people are still um, chewing over some questions, um, feel free to post them here. We can wait a couple more minutes and then we might just end a little early. And I believe um, Libby mentioned that there's a Slack we can go to to continue to chat um, or Edric actually posted the link to Aukri Slack um, where you can continue to join the conversation as well. Awesome. I did just post the Slack link for CNCF as well. So there's plenty of places for everyone to get the info they're looking for. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Kate, thank you so much for your webinar and all your great content. Um, everyone hit her up at the, all of the handles and links that are provided and, um, join us again for another CNCF live webinar and, uh, we'll see you all next time. And thanks again. Oh, wait, one more. <laughs> um, 
Okay, great. Last question. Um, can you discuss what the community has been doing with Ocri and um, in pillars or production? Um, so what has Ocri been doing? What production scenarios have been used with Ocri? Um, yeah. So we currently um, were pre-release, so we don't have any production solutions. A lot of what's going on right now is in the research space. So there's um, research communities that are trying out Aukri with devices, um, and a lot of our demos are kind of in that researchy mode, um, but there hasn't been production scenarios that I'm aware of. Right now we're kind of in that um, specking out phase where people are kind of bringing their ideas and looking at incorporating Aukri. Um, it'll take a little bit of a push um, some community involvement to get us to a place where we are fully release ready and there are production scenarios. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think with that last question, um, thank you for having me, Libby, and um, for letting us talk about Aukri. And I appreciate all the great questions. This is awesome. Thanks y'all so much. And we will see you next time. Everybody have a great afternoon.